Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie Mike here, and boy do I have a piece of shit for you today. We're continuing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise reviews. The dark, horrid, awful, no good, very bad place of Texas Chainsaw 3D. Hey y'all boys, Texas Chainsaw 3D, big old piece of shit. Uh, this film is a piece of shit. It is a potato of darkness. It is a french fry of fuck a do. It's the kind of shit that you be squeezing your butt cheeks together, you gotta poop so bad in a Walmart and you run into the bathroom and even though you about to shit your pants, this movie, it, the DVD copy is just sitting in the toilet and you go, I, I can't do it, I can't do it. I'd rather shit my pants than sit on that toilet with that disgusting shit inside of it, okay? Now this film is the original requel that goes back in time and it picks up after the 1974 Toby Hooper classic. As if it had the balls to think it had any place in that arena. They go back and it's not the worst idea at first and it's just kind of like Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills. We flash back to the olden times. Only instead of dealing with intricate sets and taking us all the way back to that time frame, they just took us back to a house in a fucking field that really nothing really even looked right at all. I mean, it's like you tried to make, recreate the, the awful fucking tower and instead filmed inside of McDonald's Golden Arches. You know what I mean? Ooh, core pounder sounds pretty good right about now with some ears on it. Uh. I mean, seriously, boss, did y'all just fucking walk up to a random house, offer him $20 and a Britney Spears CD? The cops are pulling up to the house uh, right after the events of the original movie. There's a bunch of random ass Sawyers suddenly in this house. There's a lady with a baby. Gunnar Hansen plays a cameo role. He's a dude in the house. There's a couple other random dudes in the house. And we have a Waco style standoff. Uh, Bill Mosley's playing Drayton Sawyer. There's a couple cameos and stuff throughout this, but it's just, you're like, this doesn't, no, you did not nail it. It does not look alike at all. It's like telling me Machine Gun Kelly is Eminem. Like, I can see the fucking difference. You know what I mean? It's an okay idea to pull up from there. I like the mindset. They just didn't take the time or the intricacies to pull it off in the correct way. So those of you who complained about the Halloween Kills flashback, go take a look at this hot, steamy pile of dung. This movie's stupid enough to take the stance of making Leatherface the victim of all of these events, pretty much. A bunch of rednecks pull up, probably the exact same dudes from Halloween 4. It's mob justice, they want, you know, these guys dead for what they did to this girl. And they're talking about the good book and all this shit like that. So after the events of this and the house burns down, you see a couple rednecks go over and see a, a lady holding the baby and the baby's still alive. So he kicks her in the head and they're like, hey, let's put the baby in the fucking Silverado. <laughs> Just head on home. We'll stop at the Piggly Wiggly for some fucking tuna on the way. <laughs> As great philosopher Jessica Simpson once said, tuna is is the chicken of the sea. <laughs> she had nice buns. Not, not all that filled in up here, <laughs> but she had it all. Oh, that feels kind of nice. That baby turns out to be Alexandra Daddario. Uh, of, she was in True Detective. I've seen her, she's been really good in some stuff. Uh, no one was good in this. She gets a, a letter in the, in the mail that says, hey, your mom, your real mom died and she just gave this the deed to this mansion to you. But there's one trick, you can't sell the mansion to anybody. So her and all her friends do the party friends thing and they're in their car drinking. One of them looks like Guy fucking Fieri. One of them's Trey Songs. You've got Tanya Raymond as Nikki, just the, the token super hot chick who's a total hoe bag Skaggins. And then, you know, just the typical horror movie bullshit. And they, they, they drive up to Texas. The most interesting thing about all this to me is how bad would that fucking suck if you found out that you were adopted forgetting the fact that your family's a bunch of cannibalistic serial killers what if you were given a mansion and the only rule was you're not allowed to sell it but it's in the middle of fucking bumfuck texas like it's this huge goddamn mansion like you have to move there right you can't just not go live in a gigantic free mansion what would you do would you take the mansion you're not allowed to sell it but would you take the mansion or would you just stay where you are and just, le just let it go to shit, I guess? Lifestyle over materialism. Bet you didn't see that fucking shit coming in this stupid ass movie review, did you? <laughs> Long story short, guess who's in the basement of this giant fucking mansion? I am! Me! <laughs> Leatherface. Now this, all of this up to, up to here so far, it actually kind of works for me. It's kind of an interesting angle to, to make a legacy sequel to the original film. Some of it's working out a little bit. I don't, except for the fact that they're trying to make Leatherface 
whatsoever the victim like he's a victim in a nature versus nurture type of way like if he grew up and he literally never knew right from wrong and pe they only told him the only thing that matters is your family and the only job for you and this family is to get meat for us in the in the matter of human beings you know and to chop them up and do all this shit and he literally didn't know any better it's not right but you know there's there's at least that question there like you've, you it's a fucked up life that he's been forced into. But when you take it this fucking far, when a guy murders all of your friends heinously, I mean, just cuts them to smithereens, and then by the end of this fucking movie, you're throwing him a chainsaw and going, do your thing, cuz! How fucking stupid can you be? Like, how fucking dumb can you pause? How dare you put that on screen? How dare you fucking put that on screen? Who does that? Like, Alexander Daddario even said, she's like, I didn't want to say the line, do your thing, cuz. And the producer told me, to be, she said, because it sounds silly. And he said, the movie's supposed to be silly. But the thing is, is that the movie had some stuff going for it. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't have to go that dumb with it. Um, but we'll get more into that. But yeah, Leatherface is in the basement. He comes out. He starts to kill everybody. Look, the kills, there's a couple okay sequences. He cuts Guy Fieri in half with his fucking chainsaw, which was pretty goddamn dope. Like, that was a neat looking scene. They're not all terrible. There ends up being a chase scene where all the kids are in the van together trying to escape the mansion. And Leatherface is chasing him down with the chainsaw. And he cuts, like, the wheel bearing of the the thing and it flips over and he runs up to him and he's like buzzing through it that was kind of intense that was a well done scene and the carnival scene's pretty cool too it's a neat idea i would like to see them do more with it and according to some of the people that worked on the set the original idea was to make it more gory and more of a wild scene but yeah he cuts down the fence chasing her and goes into this carnival where everybody's at and he doesn't actually like take down anybody for the most part uh, the funny part is, is that this, this, uh, pig man from Saul runs out and he's chasing people from a haunted house and they just like look at each other and he scares them off. Would have been way cooler if Leatherface had actually killed him in that sequence. But there's a scene where she does the Beverly Hills Cop three thing <laughs> you remember when beverly hills cop three when axel foley's like running through the uh he's like on the the roller coaster trying to survive or whatever uh she does that and she jumps on the ferris wheel clint eastwood's son literally comes out and you know threatens to shoot him and <laughs> her face literally he goes oh fuck he throws his chainsaw at him and it comes at you in 3d because that was the gimmick at the time <laughs> and then leatherface goes and he runs and scurries off into the woods. It's fucking hilarious. Couple cool scenes in there. Like, you didn't have to give up on this movie the way that you did. But I'm gonna tell you all that I think that the circus, that uh, county fairs, that uh, state fairs, any of them shits, all right, I think they're for pure goddamn white trash. Yes, I do. Now, let me tell you something else. Now that you know that about me, Rob Zombie was raised in a fucking circus, okay? So, I didn't say it. You can put two and two together fucking i don't give a shit man uh but rob zombie that's just how i feel about rob zombie all right he was raised in the circus all right lived in it didn't just go there for a fucking you know uh corn dog all right <laughs> that dude's fucked up man he's fucked up i don't like him i don't, I don't. you want to talk about sweaty butt crack that dude looks like he hasn't wiped in a fucking month <laughs> but they try to make the townspeople the bad guys she watches leatherface just obliterate her best friends and try to kill her too and then he notices the the necklace burn and realizes she's family so he leaves her alone but how stupid are you to just be like oh i'm your friend now do your thing cuz <laughs> god damn it it's so stupid name please below name a worse fucking single sentence in movie history i can't think of one myself i can't think of anything stupider in the history of movies than do your thing cuz now, don't y'all be saying, evil dies to not. Evil dies to not. That'll get me fucking triggered, man. I mean, saying it once wasn't that dumb, okay? So it doesn't really count here. Now, saying it 276,542 and a half times like they did in the movie, that was a little fucking stupid. But I'm just talking about, or he, fucking douchebag holes, talking about one, which one line in the fucking movie, okay? All right, all right, take you some skin off some chicken, rub it on your face and go, ooh. And then at the end of the movie, she takes him and she's like, I'm gonna take care of you. Get in your fucking basement, buddy. High five, all right, I'll bring you back out when the fucking game's on. We'll, we'll have some hot pockets. Like, what the fuck? Oh, Jesus Christ. And what is she gonna do, go find humans to fucking feed him? I know that the other lady was feeding him, which is kind of dumb too. I don't fucking know, Jesus Christ. Ah! They let these people make fucking movies. I don't understand it. 
Um, not one person was like, that's stupid. Not one person at Lionsgate, at any of these fucking meetings was like, hey, uh, the fucking bagel guy in the back. Hey, it's kind of fucking stupid. Does anybody think it's fucking stupid to make Leatherface the good guy here? Okay, thought so. Christmas in a fucking Christmas cakes box. So, moving on, I think the worst part of the movie is that. The second worst part of the movie is definitely the special effects. Worst special effects of the entire series, the entire franchise. Uh, they try to go CG with it. There is a cool death where the dude gets eaten by the, the gigantic meat grinder thing. That was a cool looking death, but it was also tainted by CGI. And, you know, in a series where there's at one point there's a, a, a coat of body skin with titties on it just hanging on a bathroom stall i think you got to go practical effects i don't think we can go cg and all this shit leather's face his entire look like he just looks goddamn awful i mean it's fun to see how the mask changes yet stays the same in this franchise like even in the new one he's got crazy droopy face and it's just weird looking but like it's always the same but different and this it's just fucking horrid like, it's awful. The original mask he wears, it looks like, he looks like he fucking played for the Acme Packers in 1927. It just looks like a leather football helmet that he poked eyeballs in. It's awful. It looks like old fucking, like an old couch. He makes strange noises. He doesn't quite move the right way for me. This is my least favorite leather face, easily. Uh, but the main problem was the mask and the special effects in a series, a franchise that has prided itself and done an amazing job with practical effects. And at one point he cuts off someone's face and he literally, this is a fresh fucking face, all right? Hot butter biscuits! This is a fresh fucking face. He peels off this guy. And by the time it goes from his face to the screen, it's old and leathery like a football again. It's like old crusty leather. Like how did that fucking happen? Motherfucker went from a fresh skin to the goddamn Necronomicon in seconds. And he puts it on and it's just like, you know, he looks like the fucking dude in Slipknot already. And there's a kind of a cool scene where they show him stitch on the mask and he's stitching it through his skin and he's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I like that a little bit. That was kind of funny. But yeah, um, number one, the the family slash do your thing cuz slash leather faces is, is a good guy element number two the special effects and you know we've said this before when you get these characters wrong a lot of people didn't like halloween 2018 for their own reasons most people did the majority did if you look at the reviews and the audience reviews and stuff but some people don't like halloween 2018 and i understand that for me my favorite thing about it and what we felt like they did right was they got Michael Myers right. They got the look of him right. They did a great job with him. I feel like if you get these pillars of these movies correct, they can work. Uh, in this movie, they don't get that right. Leatherface just doesn't feel like Leatherface at all to me. So that was bad. None, you know, A couple cool kills, a couple great opportunities. I mean, great opportunities. That carnival scene. And they did a good job with the car chase scene. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this movie for me... Oh, it's one of the stupidest movies I've ever fucking seen. Three. <laughs> I agree with the guy who put on a few too many pounds over the course of COVID. Uh, this movie stinks. It sucks, but it's like it's like uh, uh, getting a, 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 a lump of coal, uh, a lump of coal uh, dipped in Satan's personal urinal. <laughs> okay, for Christmas, having to eat it, shit it out, and then eat it again in front of all your fifth grade classmates. Okay, while having to listen to Who Let the Dogs Out on repeat with a spike shoved up your ass. I gotta. Yet, man, I got shit to do. I got a fucking turkey to cook. And by turkey, I mean titties. 